Hey, I'm Rob Howe, your rock star realtor. Are you thinking of selling and buying in 2020? Well, I've got some information you're going to want to see. And by the end, you'll know how. Hey, that's me, Rob Howe. I was hitting the stage almost every night like a real rock star. But I was making no money. That's when I realized I needed a career change. So I got my real estate license and... and boom! boom! Everything changed. My destiny was revealed. Now, my clients are the rock stars and the home is the stage. That's why I'm Rob Howe, the rock star realtor. 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 Question and answer series, selling and buying. Here we go. How does it work when I want to sell my home and then buy a home? How do I do that? Well, selling and buying is a very good position to be in in general. Because you're gonna sell a property and now you're buying another property. Obviously, you wanna know where you're going. So a little reconnaissance on where you're going, what neighborhood you're looking in. Most sellers that are about to buy, they know this even before they talk to me. But if you don't, you're gonna get a search set up and we're gonna make sure we answer all those questions of where you're looking. You're gonna wanna put that property on the market before you actually go and try to put your offer in on a home. Now, some people like to do it the other way around because they are scared to put the home on the market and they're sort of flying in the wind when they have to go find their home. Well, you do need to know that there's available homes out there, so that's important. But as long as you know there's available homes, we'll find you the home. And you can always sort of buy a little time, so to speak. Once you have your home on the market, you have a con what's called a contingent offer and even better if you've got the inspection and the appraisal done on your home and now you're giving an offer. Now you're very strong going in with your contingent offer to the seller. You want to have strength. Boom, muscles. You want to go in like just, you know, as strong as possible so that you can really dictate terms with the seller that you're now trying to buy a home from. Having your home on the market, having it in escrow, having uh, the home inspection and the appraisals done on that, also, you know, getting pre-approved. Make sure you're, you're pre-approved with your lender already if you're going to use a lender. Um, sometimes you're selling a home and you're buying a new home with cash. Great. Right. That looks really strong. But oftentimes you're going to use a loan and maybe put down a larger down payment from the sale of your home or however you're doing it. But you need to go to the lender and get pre-approved. That's another way you're going to look really strong. Muscles. If you're going and you're just saying, I'm going to put my home on the market, it makes it a little harder for a seller to say, you know what, I want to take this offer. you got to remember, you're putting more gears into there. More things can go wrong. And that's what the sellers think. And certainly if you're my client and I'm representing the seller, I'm aware of that and I'm going to make you aware of that, especially if we have multiple offers we may want to look at the offers that don't have contingencies. So when you do have a contingency, you want to make sure that you're setting it up so that it looks as strong as possible. It's certainly not impossible to do. It's done all the time. As a matter of fact, right now, they're going crazy with this, but you need to know a few things. And those are the things that I would immediately suggest. And I really don't care how you're buying. If you're using a loan, if you know you're going to use a loan, you got to get your financing all ready to go. It's like setting up the dominoes and you're setting yourself up for success, right? So now you're visualizing the process and you're hammering it out as you go. And that's setting up for success. Hunting down trouble before you ever have it. You're going to hear me say that a lot. And that's part of my consultation you would have with me is certainly to make a plan how we're going to sell by. All right. It's not hard to do. You just need to be ready. I mean, what if I can sell my home without, uh, you know, getting a, a loan for the next home? What if I can just do them separately? Can I do that? If you don't even have to sell your home and you can just go out and buy, obviously that's awesome. And that is something that is a little bit more rare, but certainly gives you lots of power. Boom, muscles. If you can avoid it, great. It's going to help you on the buyer side to not have to worry about selling your home. You can do it afterwards. You can take the time to move, whatever you want to do. It's relaxation city. Chill. You know what? I think I can do this. I can sell my house on my own. What do you think? Oh, you're going to sell your home for sale by owner. You're thinking about that, huh? Well, I know a lot of people do it. But I also know it's not as successful as people would like it to be. In other words, you don't make the money you think you're going to make. And 
you're taking some risks, in my opinion, because you don't have representation. You know, representation understands what the laws are, understands the documentation, understands what the buyers are trying to get achieve. And you may think you can do that, and I do know there are the rare exceptions out there, and maybe you can. But for the most part, people have a harder time and they don't make as much money as they think they will by selling their home on their own. It is proven that agents sell your home for higher than you can. You do not have the established presence in a marketplace like real estate agents, even just one that might just come into the business and has access to the MLS, the multiple listing system, can put your home on that system and now it goes out to thousands of websites. Now, I know there are some access that you think you have and you do. It's not, I'm not gonna tell you you have no way to do this. It's just limiting yourself. And to me, that's a penny smart and a nickel foolish. And when you do that, I think you're taking risks. You're taking risk with liability. What happens if things go wrong? Now, months after the sale, things can still go wrong. If the documentation is not in line, you may have a problem. Those are things that we don't wanna do. And I believe that doing a FISBO or a for sale by owner is a, almost a surefire way to have a harder time and to make less money on your home. You're selling my house. Can't you just bring me a buy it? I mean, why do I gotta put, uh, put up with all these showings and stuff? You know, it's ridiculous. It's a lot of work. Well, if your home's not on the market yet and your agent brings you a buyer, now I, there are rare cases where there's a very popular neighborhood and you have an agent that knows you're thinking about selling and they already have somebody that wants that home. That's a rare situation and it's wonderful, especially if that buyer really wants your home. Now, in general, I'm gonna say right up front, you haven't opened it up to the maximum possibilities. In other words, only that one buyer or a few that your agent might know knows about your sale. So you really gotta see the proof in the pudding that that offer is gonna be your best offer. Now. If it's me, I know that if I'm bringing you an offer, I know it's strong. I know this is something that you can probably really take into consideration as a very, very solid offer. I always want you to get the best deal. So my first go-to is gonna be to expose it to everybody. But in the rare case that I can bring somebody to you, this is where I think you should probably take a look at the kind of trust that you already have in your agent. Do you believe that they are looking out for you in the best ways possible? That's number one question. If not, you're gonna need to take a grain of salt with everything and really analyze, is this the best offer for me? If your agent has already listed the property and we've had showings, maybe we've had other offers, but I've got a buyer that I can bring in and they have a very good offer. Maybe it's the best offer. I would hope that it's pretty darn obvious. Now, I can't, tell that buyer a number of things. I can't tell them if you told me what your bottom line is unless you, in writing, told me to tell them. So there's a number of things that as a dual agent that we have to be aware of, all right? You're, there's some gray areas, there's some definitely no-no areas and ethics that you have to follow. And this is where sometimes it's not even in my best interest to worry about finding the buyer as much as letting the market bring our buyer. But if that happens, I am now acting for both parties. And in that case, we're gonna have some documents that explain what my responsibility is. Okay, I still have a duties owed to both sides of the, the, the transaction. And there's certain things that if I know material about the home, I have an obligation to tell. But there's certain things that I don't have an obligation to tell, whether it's the buyer and what they might be able to do or spend on that property, and whether it's the seller and what they might be able to take for that property. Those things, unless it's in writing, those things are not going to be allowed. So that's how we keep the separation. And that's how you'll understand if your listing agent is bringing you a very good offer from a buyer. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. There's a lot more where that came from, many more questions and answers. And every Monday I'll drop a new video on YouTube. So smash that subscribe button. Comment, tell me things that you wanna tell me. I wanna know what you're thinking and I'm gonna do videos based on what you're thinking. I'm Rob Howe, the Rockstar Realtor. And now you know how. See you on the next one.